You could argue that the most important skill that we need to develop as photographers or just as artists in general is our, our critical eye. Our ability to sit down and look at an image and analyze what it is that we like about the image, what it is that is bothering us about the image. This is what tells us what we need to work on the next time we go out to take photos or sit down and post process photos. And you can practice this just looking at other people's photography. So developing your critical eye is incredibly important. And that's what we're going to work on today with your images that you submitted to me. By the way, there were hundreds of them. So if we, I'm not going to be able to get to all of them. And hopefully there'll be a theme kind of reveal itself throughout this session. So that's what we're going to do. Let's work on our critical eye. Let's jump into it. So these first couple images I wanted to share with you guys are because they are near perfection. They are great examples of, you know, images that are just really, really functional and really, really successful. This first one from Tim is a great example of beautiful minimalism. There are no distractions. The bullseye type composition where we have the main subject, this beautiful snow covered island in the center of the frame just it just works i really like the aspect ratio i like the subtle tones maybe we could amp up saturation just the tiniest bit if we just bring up vibrance just the tiniest bit and make that water just a tiny bit more blue maybe that works but still what a beautiful image and this is just a great example of what i refer to as beautiful minimalism it is simple and clean and as a result, very successful. Beautiful image from Tim. Now on the other side of things, here's a really complex scene. We have a lot going on. We have a lot of different elements. Um, I believe if I remember right, this was taken in Transylvania and we have these beautiful rolling hills of the, of the green grass. We have this little barn in the background. Nice contrasting colors, a lot of saturation. We even have wildflowers in the grass. But really what ties it all together is the sweeping leading line of this, of this gravel road. And it is this leading line, this really strong element that ties it all together. Otherwise, you know, there's not really a rhyme or a reason to the different elements and the way that they're composed. But what ties it all together is this beautiful sweeping leading line. And the way that he positioned himself, so it's coming out of one side of the frame and then sweeping around, he really maximized this little S-curve by standing where he chose to stand. It really, really ties it together. So this is a great example of how you can take a more complex scene, but you can bind it together with that really strong element that is kind of consistent throughout. It creates that visual flow. And you can imagine this same scene without this road, it wouldn't have that same visual flow. So that's why this works. Great job, Paulian. Paulian, I believe I'm pronouncing that right. Excellent, excellent image. So these next two images are from Kim. These are a great example of how you can simplify a scene with a wide angle lens. So a lot of times when you're shooting with a really wide focal length, if, especially if you're shooting at chest height or, you know, eye level, you're just including so much that a lot of times those wide angle scenes are kind of uh, busy and complex and there's lots of, lots of stuff going on. But the way that you can simplify a wide angle scene is by getting really close to foreground elements and, and you kind of clean up the composition just by filling up so much of the composition with that foreground. So this is one great example of how she got down really close to these boats. And then in this frame, absolutely gorgeous, where she got down close to these flowers. And then you have, you're left with a very, very simple frame. And it's all, all leading back to, you know, that beautiful conical mountain in the background, which because it's centered, it works. That's one thing about vertical oriented compositions is it just feels right to have, you know, that very strong shape, whatever it is kind of centered because you don't have as much room off to the sides compositionally to put it off center. So when I'm shooting vertical oriented frames, I often put that background element centered just like she did. Um, beautiful processing on it as well. The only thing that I might suggest on these is it looks like we might be able to 
might be able to turn that horizon line just a little bit to the right because it was just slightly tilted to the left. But beautiful process and beautiful compositions. Really, really good work. This next image is from Annette and what beautiful atmosphere and light she has in this frame. Couple little things that are like bother me just the tiniest bit is I, I don't love the, the way that these two trees overlap. And I know that, you know, just looking at it, I don't think that you could get them to not overlap, but just by moving to the right, it looks like these trees are close enough that that wouldn't have really been an option. There's not much you can do about that. But what I would love to see in this is just to amplify the amplify the tones that you have here. You have this beautiful, warm, streaming light streaming in. And I think that it would be nice to, you know, amplify that a bit with a little bit of saturation. But to also contrast that with a, working a little bit of cold tones into those shadows. So, you know, if we were just doing it in Lightroom, we could go down to the color grading tab and maybe just work in just a little bit, a little bit of cool tone into those shadows, maybe lift them the tiniest bit. And let's add some saturation to this frame and kind of bring it to life color wise by amplifying those colors. One of the things that I always try to do when I'm picking white balance or post processing is I, I want there to be a balance of warm and cool tones. Right. And this frame would be very easy if we started too warm to have it just be a wash of warm, warm tones. Um, so you did a good job picking your white balance. I think I would just love to see just a little bit of cool tones brought into those deepest shadows. And you could, you know, like I said, do it, do it in the color grading tab. The way that I would probably do it is I would open it up as a smart object inside of Photoshop process it once for the highlights and once for the shadows and I would process it with different color temperatures. So I'd have a colder color temperature in those shadow tones than I would in those highlight tones. But you can see how if we go before and after this is, you know, probably too much blue before after and you can see just kind of amplifying amplifying that color contrast and, and lifting those shadows a little bit. It makes that light feel a little bit stronger than, than it was, but still really beautiful scene. I love this atmospheric light in the background. Next image from Marcus and I, I love me some storm clouds and this is a gorgeous storm cloud. Again, I think it's color that, um, that would be my main critique. One of the beautiful parts of having these big storm clouds is that really cyan hail core that you'll often get. Um, but with this particular processing that you've done, you lose a little bit of the, of the significance of that cyan hail core because kind of the whole sky is cyan, right? Also, one of my favorite parts of storm clouds is how dark the, the underneath of the, that cloud shelf gets. And because we have such a kind of a bright scene here, I think we lose some of the drama of that. So my suggestions would be just to bring down the exposure a bit. And if we bring down the exposure, you see that that storm cloud starts to look a bit more ominous. And if we just work in and try to neutralize neutralize our white balance a little bit. That way we maintain the cyan color in that hail core, but we kind of neutralize the rest of the sky. That way, you know, that way we're getting that variance in tone in the sky rather than if I go before just a wash of cyan in the sky. If you neutralize it a little bit, you can actually see that, oh yeah, that's a actually a quite strong hail core. So maybe just adding a little bit of contrast, darkening it down just a bit. I'd probably do this more to just the sky and leave the foreground as it was. Now we start getting that nice color separation in our sky where it's not just a wash. It's not just a wash of cyan. We're getting cyan in the hail core, which makes it feel different and special and, and the way it was. So I think that would be my main critiques here is just tweaking your color. That way you're getting that color separation. You know, a lot of times you want to unify your colors just to make them feel more, make the image feel more uniform color temperature wise or, you know, color palette wise. 
but with storm photos, you want you want to kind of maintain the the colors that were there, just simply because like it's not every day that you get that those crazy cyans in a sky. But with these big storms rolling in, and you get that that cyan hail core, those are really cool, and you want to really maintain that. And if the entire sky turns to cyan, I guess what I'm saying is you lose the significance of that hail core color if the whole sky is cyan. These next images are from Rob, and they were actually taken like I was standing next to him when he took these. Um, beautiful image here, and I think the the critiques that I have on these next three images are more about the light and the color and the light direction. So in this image, the reason it works is because I love the fact that we're looking directly into that light. We're getting that moment of light back here. Maybe the image is just the tiniest bit dark. I'd like to see it open just a little bit so we can see a bit more into the shadows of the, of the lone tree here. Also, I kind of feel like everything to the left of the tree is just, just a little bit extra. You know, most of the interest is back here in the, the background valley. You know, we have the light source over here. Most of the interest is from the tree to the right. So I would be tempted to just, just crop some of that out maybe. So something a bit more like this would feel maybe, maybe a bit more balanced. Something like that. That way the interest is towards the center of the photo, but we also have, you know, balanced interest on either side. So I really, really like this image. Now this next one, I really like the dark processing that you did with this, with this uh, forest scene. But one of the things that bothers me is this kind of purplish blue color cast that we're getting on some of the reflective surfaces of those shiny leaves. And super simple fix for that is just to go into the HSL panel, which I need to go up to right here. And let's just desaturate the blues. You can see like when I slide this around, you can see exactly where those blues are. They're on those reflective surfaces. Let's desaturate the blues, desaturate the purples. And just by getting rid of those, maybe a little ma a magenta, we turn this off and on before after you can really see where those were and that helps a lot now what you could do because i know rob is a, an advanced photoshop guy is now you can go in you can make a selection of these let's just do it we'll open it up inside of photoshop real quick and now what we can do is let's just create a new dodge burn layer so a new layer change blend mode to soft light and let's go up and create a selection of those brightest highlights. So I'm gonna look at like a lights two or a lights three. So I think a lights two is perfect here. I'm gonna make a selection. And because these are reflective highlights, they need to be bright. So let's go ahead and brighten them just a little bit, but we're gonna do so with that kind of daylight color that we have happening naturally. So we want to pick a fairly, a fairly yellow or warm color. And we're just going to hit these a little bit with this kind of day daylight color. And what it's going to do is work a little bit of saturation and color into these brightest highlights and take them away from white because right now they're very desaturated. They're very desaturated. They're very white, which is not really natural in this forest scene. These areas here and just do a little bit of guided dodging and burning. By doing this, we're going to work in a little bit of saturation onto those reflective surfaces on these ferns before, after fairly subtle, but it helps them feel a little bit more natural. This way they're reflecting that little bit of daylight that was passing through this forest scene, but we're working that color in there as well. We're working a little bit of that warmth on there. We end up with a far more cohesive color palette rather than having those blues and purples mixed in there because the blues and the purples were, were really not, not meshing well with this wash of green greens and yellows that we would have in a forest scene. So before, after. 
otherwise, I really like the dark processing. I would I would definitely go through and work in some more highlights. You know, we have this one particular moss covered limb that r looks really nice. So going in and and dodging a bit more on that will give the eye something to kind of latch onto because you have this really dark frame. But in order to guide the eye, you're going to need some highlights in there. And then the last image from Rob is this rainbow that we got in the Painted Hills. And the one, my critique here would be that yeah, obviously we've worked in this kind of um, hazy side light. But the problem is with a rainbow, we all know that rainbows happen directly away from the light source. And so this light would not be streaming in from this side. And, you know, I'm trying to fake a little bit of light, calling you out a little bit here. So there, there's a term called unique context of nature. So would this happen in nature? And the reason that this doesn't feel quite right is because this is happening outside the context of nature, meaning it doesn't actually happen in nature. So I would abandon this side light that you're trying to work in here. Maybe you could, you know, add a little bit of haziness around where that light is hitting. So it's a little less contrasty. I remember from this scene that there was a lot of contrast in those areas that are getting hit by that light. So you can decrease the contrast in those areas, but don't try to work in this side light that wasn't actually happening because subconsciously we know something's up here because Rainbows happen away from our light source, so we can't have light streaming in from the side. Also, I would lift the shadows and the blacks just a little bit so we can see some of the layering in the painted hills down here as well. Those would be my critiques for these. All right, so this next image is from Scott and really cool Badlands that we're photographing here. Now, when I look at this image, I know that the, the, it's more about you know, what's happening below the horizon line than it is about what's happening above. It is a cool cloud, but it's not, the cloud is nothing special. To me, what is special is everything below the horizon line. Yet we have about two thirds of our composition being taken up by the sky. And, you know, as a photographer, you're kind of guiding the viewer and telling the viewer what is important through real estate. So the more real estate that something takes up, it must be more important. Either that or you're using a negative space kind of idea. But this is not negative space because there is a cloud there. So, so you're telling the, the viewer that the sky is more important than, you know, the Badlands. And I disagree with that because the Badlands are beautiful. Honestly, composing the frame something a bit more like this, you know, you could do it even as a panorama something a bit more like this where we're losing some of the less interesting sky but we're gaining a lot more of the real estate being taken up by what i find a more be more interesting which are these badlands so just simply just by bringing this crop down you could be pretty aggressive with it too honestly if you came all the way down to something like this you can see that this instantly feels like the land is far more important as opposed to this, where it feels like the sky is far more important. A simple crop makes all the difference in the world as far as like what you're telling the viewer to look at. And for me, just eliminating, especially some of the empty blue up above, and just bringing that crop way down, it really directs the eye to the Badlands, which are, are very beautiful. Compositionally, these, these kind of areas are kind of tough. You know, but I do like that we have a little bit of symmetry happening with this hill on the right, this hill on the left. And if we just kind of amplified that symmetry by trying to have the same amount of this hill and this hill, it would at least give you kind of a, a compositional theme. It's kind of a bowl. It's being the corners are being framed with these hills, which you could then just add a little subtle linear gradient. Just kind of bringing down the exposure a little bit here. And then you could do a very similar thing, create another one, another little linear gradient, and just bring the exposure down a little bit here. That way it funnels the eye towards the center of the photo and it feels very much framed in these bottom corners. Another thing that I would recommend is that one of the reasons that I like to darken a sky or to add a linear gradient in the sky is that way the eye doesn't just follow the highlights out of the top of the frame. 
So if we look at this, our brightest highlights are in the sky and they're pretty high up in the sky now, especially since this crop. So another simple way to just kind of contain the eye is just to recover highlights or to darken the exposure of the top portion of the sky. Now, because we're dealing with a JPEG here, there's not really a lot we can do. Once these highlights are blown, I can't really do anything with them. Um, but just by recovering the highlights in that sky at the raw stage of the, of, of the file, uh, you contain the eye much better. And now the eye is going to want to explore these badlands more than just follow the highlights up and out of the frame. So there's a lot of good in this frame. I would just re I would just recompose it and try to keep the eye within those badlands rather than letting the eye escape out the top of the frame. So these next images are from Drew and they are so good. Um, but there, I do have a couple little pieces of feedback that I'd like to give you. So this first one here, beautiful Milky Way, and you did a really good job of making sure that you have sharpness from front to back. We even did a little bit of light painting in this background. Really good job bringing this together. I'm guessing this is a blue hour blend um, with a with a night sky. I really like the colors and the tones, but it does feel a little bit, a little bit contrasty. And if we look at the next two that you submitted, this one as well, love the dramatic light, good solid composition. Everything is nicely framed and, and contained within the frame, which is really hard to do in these chaotic scenes. Again, shadow areas, very contrasty. And then the third image here from Mono Lake, um, beautiful light once again, really nice compositional flow. But I would say that contrast is quite strong. So in all three of these images, I think that if you just kind of treated your shadow areas a little bit with a little bit less contrast, I think that you're going to maintain more shadow information, but you can still hit your highlights with just as much contrast as you've been doing. So I, I find that when I'm processing, and this is just a personal taste thing, I prefer to like at, in those deepest shadows, I tried to be very careful with the amount of contrast that hit, it goes into those areas. That's why a lot of times when I add contrast, I do th so through a luminosity mask simply because I can control where that contrast is going to go. And sometimes in these, especially night images, if you hit these areas with a lot of contrast, like we did, they just kind of disappear. They get crunched. Adding contrast through luminosity mass, I think, would help a lot in all three of these images, honestly. Like the dark areas of these chola cactus, um, very, very dark. But if we just lifted, you know, obviously you'd want to do this with your raw file, but if we lifted shadows in the blacks, then suddenly you have information there, but they can still be dark. The same is true with this Mono Lake image, although I would say that because our little uh, Tufa Island out here is so dark. I would maybe leave this amount of contrast in your foreground, but then just lift the lift the blacks a little bit in your background. So with this radial filter, we'll just do something like this. Obviously, you wouldn't want to do it this way. You want to do it for real with like in Photoshop, but just lifting the shadow areas of that background, if we do a little before, after, before, after, it allows the eye to explore those shadows a little bit more and you're not, not losing the, your blacks quite as much. But all three compositions are really, really nice. Also, might darken it down here just a little bit. It's getting quite bright close to that horizon line. Yeah, beautiful images, really nice compositions. Maybe just be a little bit more... Um, more gentle with the contrast as far as going into those shadow areas. You don't want innocent bystander pixels. This next image is absolutely beautiful. Um, again, just the, the light, the atmosphere, the moment, it, it all really comes together in this image. I think that this is one of those where I personally would like to see a little bit of color contrast. You know, if we just cooled our color temperature down just the tiniest bit, 
we would end up with colder shadows and warmer highlights. And just having that little bit of variance in our, in our color tones, I think really adds a sense of depth that we lose if it's just a wash of one color. Now, this is probably very true to life to how it was, but I think just choosing a slightly colder color temperature and maybe amplifying the saturation just a little bit, maybe not too much in the cold tones, but more in the warm tones, would just help with that sense of, of depth as far as color depth. Because if, if things are just a wash of one tone, it does have a feeling but it doesn't. But you lose that color contrast now. And the, again, this is just personal taste. And just because I say it doesn't make it true, I really like this. I just think it would be nice with um, with a little bit more color separation, just a little bit. Also, anytime you have a reflection of something, you need to make sure that the reflection is not quite as bright as the actual light source. So you see how the reflection is equally as bright as our as our sun and as our sky over here i would maybe just recover the highlights or just darken the exposure of the bottom portion of this frame just a little bit doesn't need to be anything extreme but you just don't want you don't want your reflection to be quite as bright as the actual light source because you're losing light in that and i'm guessing that you recovered highlights quite a bit in order to maintain the sun here. Um, so you just need to make sure that you're not, you're not quite as bright in your reflection, but absolutely gorgeous, gorgeous image. These next three images are from Miklos. Miklos? Miklos? My pronunciations are terrible and I'm sorry if I'm butchering it. What a fun, awesome idea with, you can see him, him down here light painting with his headlamp. I really like the amount of depth and dimension that you have on these rocks here close to camera. This is definitely a heavily thought out composition because it had to have been focus stacked, or at least I assume it was focus stacked. Looks like the Milky Way might have even been stacked as well. Plus we have the light painted frame. So much work going into this image. I think compositionally this one works nicely. I just I kind of wish that we had a little bit more detail in the water out here. So this image is really nice, but this image is excellent. And I think the reason that it's excellent is simply because we have a really nice composition here with the, the rock formation, this cliff side really nicely framing the bottom portion of the frame. We have this beautiful arch, um, we have the light kind of drawing attention to that arch. I'm guessing we have some light pollution back here in the background. And then obviously you standing there with your headlamp or your light. The, the only thing that I'm not a huge fan of is the colors that we have in the Milky Way. And I'm guessing maybe you tracked this or it, like shot it at a low ISO and tracked it. Me personally, I don't like it when we end up with purples in the Milky Way. There's just a little bit too much saturation from my taste. And I know that, you know, those colors are there, but you can't see them with your naked eye. And I, I prefer my Milky Way to be a little bit more um, warm and less, less magenta, but it's totally a taste thing. Really nice processing on this beautiful composition. Maybe we could recover or darken these corners just a little bit so they're not quite as eye-catching, but really, really good job. Now, this this last one is incredible. <laughs> what a lightning strike. Holy cow. That is absolutely beautiful. I think my only critiques on this, obviously, composition, you're, anytime you're shooting at shooting lightning at night, you know, it's tough because especially when you're overlooking a city, um, it's just difficult to compose in a way where you don't have a lot of distractions. And it's I mean, it's always going to feel a little bit cluttered, but I do like the horizontal nature of the of the comp both the composition, the aspect ratio. Everything is kind of spread out horizontally. The interesting choice is that you kind of went with this very matte processing style and we have a it's very cyan and i and i think i would prefer to allow those 
the, that black point to go a little bit further, at least below the horizon, to go a little bit further left. Allow that allow that histogram to get a little bit darker because we don't really need this information down here and you went very, very matte with the original edit. And I think allowing that to go dark, maybe just below the horizon would be a good thing. So like if we just grabbed linear gradient, faded it out here, and then just brought the black point down a little bit. That way we're not losing information in our in our clouds and in our sky, but we're allowing the, that land to be a little bit less um, eye-catching. Because it, like if you go too extreme with a matte effect, it just looks very matte. And it's a, to it's a personal taste thing. It's just not my personal taste. Though. And I wouldn't mind seeing, seeing a little bit less cyan in the color grade. Again, that's just a personal taste thing. I like the I like the cold feeling of it, especially contrasting against those warm warm lights below the horizon. Um, but I would just like to see see it a little bit more neutral and less cyan like it was. Something more like that. It just allows the bolt to feel a little bit more electric blue rather than electric green because they're not electric green. <laughs> but it's still a beautiful image and I absolutely love this image as well. So these next two from Roger are excellent examples of, of how shutter speed impacts the, the feel and the energy of a frame. So this first one here, beautiful timing with that wave kind of sweeping around this rock face and fanning out. And we still have this nice edge to where we can see that leading edge with that foam Beautiful, beautiful moment. Really like that um, that we have our light source low on the horizon here. It does feel just the tiniest bit green. So I would add just a tiny bit more magenta. Doesn't have to be anything crazy, um, but really like this. Another small critique is that it bothers me just the, the tiniest bit that these shadows are more open than these shadows, which feels backwards, right? We things farther away from camera should have have a little bit more mist or atmosphere between us and it. So simply just opening those shadows just a little bit in the background, I think would feel, feel a little better, better. It would give it a better sense of depth. So if we just go before, after, before, after, kind of get what I'm saying here where you want these shadows to be slightly more open than these shadows. But other than that, absolutely beautiful moment. Great shutter speed choice. Um, really, really nailed this. Now this next image, totally different thing. Super long exposure. I wonder if we have the shutter speed information. Yeah. 240 seconds. So, you know, if you're going to do a long exposure, do a long exposure because you get this beautiful, milky, foggy look with a shutter speed. And if you go 30 seconds, you're going to get, you know, fairly calm water. But if you go three minutes, you get very calm water. And that's exactly what he's done here. Really, really beautiful. And what you're left with is this theme of sharp rock and soft water. So it's the theme is really all about texture. And as a result, the, the main subject becomes the beautiful textures in the rock. Really, really great. My only critiques with this image would be that perhaps some of the highlights are getting a little hot back here. Also, the cyan band of color doesn't really add to the frame much in any way. I really like just the, the textures. You know, the texture of this image is really the story to me. So maybe if we just took the vibrant slider and moved it left, subtly removed some of that saturation from the background. You can see this is before, this is after. I think it gets rid of that banding. We don't have to go all the way black and white. And in fact, you know, I kind of like the saturation in our foreground. I just don't like it in the background. So maybe let's just grab a simple linear gradient tool, remove some saturation from it, and then just drag it down and just subtly remove some of the saturation higher in the frame. That way we still have that nice saturation in this pool, 
but we've removed it from that background where it was getting a little bit out of control because of the contrast that has been added. Remember that contrast and saturation are forever linked. So when you increase contrast like he has, so the, you're also increasing saturation. So if you want if you want the effect of that contrast, but you don't want the saturation, you have to counterbalance it. So in Photoshop, you can change the blend mode to luminosity and that will do it. Or you can just go back through here with a linear gradient tool and remove some saturation. But beautiful image and and really this is like a, a little mini course on how important shutter speed is to the energy in a seascape. So I think the last image we're going to look at is this one from Abu. And this is absolutely beautiful. And, and it's clever as well because what he has done is he's came in these kind of early, early hours where there's a lot of blue tones. And, you know, if, if you're photographing a scene like this with a lot of snow and it's kind of blue hour or pre-sunrise or post-sunset, you end up with just kind of a wash of blue. But what he has done is he's waited for a car to pass on the road back behind and you end up with this beautiful color separation, this color contrast. And it is so beautiful. When I look at this composition, for me, the most interesting parts are kind of back in here where we have, and this was taken in Yosemite, you have the cliff side kind of framing this top portion. You got all these beautiful low clouds in the background. You have the deep blues in the reflection, and then you got the car trails back here. I think that what bothers me about including the bank here is that it makes you wish that there was a bank over here. It just feels very much not symmetrical or unsymmetrical. So what I would recommend is just cropping it or to compose it in a different way. And I know that you can't just go back and reshoot something like this, but to co compose it in a way to where you're filling the frame with the, the most interesting stuff. I don't know if that would end here. I don't know if we include that tree or not, but something more like this maybe fills the frame with the best stuff. And for me, the best stuff is definitely this beautiful light and the, and the beautiful reflections in the water. And by eliminating this bank, it really fills the frame with the majority of the, of the best interest. So something like this probably is the, the way that I would have, that I would have liked to have seen it composed. Also, maybe just amplifying the colors just a little bit, just to really maximize the amount of color contrast, color separation we have, because really that's the, that's the beauty of this image is this beautiful contrasting light that we have here. And honestly, the way you shot this is beautiful on its own. Like I'm just always in this creative curiosity mode where I ask myself, I wonder what it would look like like this, or I wonder what it would look like like this. And I always, I always try in my mind to maximize or amplify what is good about an image. Sometimes that's about, you know, filling the frame with the most interesting bits. Sometimes it's about like, you know, if you have an image like this, that is all about this beautiful color separation that you have here with the warm light and the cold light, you know, just increasing vibrance, saturation, and maybe bringing down the exposure just the tiniest bit, because remember, luminance impacts the amount of saturation you see. So the brighter something is, the less saturated it looks. The darker it is, the more saturated it looks. So by bringing down exposure just the tiniest bit, you get to see a little bit more of the saturation in that warm light. Really beautiful images submitted this week. It's always so much fun to see how talented a lot of the people that follow me here are like a lot of you are way better than me and it's really kind of an honor that you guys follow me at all so take what i say with a grain of salt i'm just one person and one set of eyes and we all see things differently and just because i say something doesn't make it right it just makes it the way nick sees it beautiful images guys and hopefully there's a nugget or two in there uh, that you guys find useful or maybe keep in mind next time you go out to shoot. I hope that you are all well, and we'll see you in the next video. Take it easy, everybody.